A very good question was asked by one of the students in the course. And the question was, is it possible for markup to be more than 100% of selling price? And uh, how to interpret the fact that markup can be more than 100% of cost price relative to, uh, is it feasible for markup to be more than 100% of selling price? So I thought I would answer the question by by uh, considering a few possibilities. For example, let's consider uh, the fact that, uh, let's start off by considering that the fact that uh, markup could be 250% of cost price. So if we consider the markup being equal to 250% of cost price. Now you'll notice that I always spe specify how the markup is going to be based on, and this is key. It's really, really important that you know what it's based on because if you don't know what it's based on, then you don't know what the 100% factor is. So if markup is 250% of cost price, then, then what you have is a relationship between selling price and cost price being reduced to the markup. So markup is the difference between selling price and cost price. Now, what we've just established is that markup is 250% of cost price, so that means that this markup is 250% of cost price. So I put the cost price down here. Because the reason why I put the cost price down here is because now I want to go to where 100% of cost price is. And 100% of cost price is right here in the cost price row. So we've got 100% of cost price. Now, in order to get to the markup, how do I get there? Well, I need to subtract the cost from the top row. I need to subtract the cost from the selling price. So selling price minus cost price gives me my markup. And notice that all of these are based on cost price. So therefore, the percentage of selling price has to be based on cost price as well. So what percentage of cost price do I subtract 100% of cost price so that I end up with 250% of cost price? Well, using common sense and logic, you know that the number that goes in the top row must be 350% of cost price. And so therefore, if I start off with 350% of cost price being equal to my selling price, I subtract 100% of my cost price, that leaves me with a remainder or a difference of 250% of cost. Now, putting dollars to all of this amount, supposing my cost price, since this is all based on cost price, supposing my cost price is equal to $100, it's an arbitrary number, so I'll just pick this, if my cost price is $150, and that means that my cost price is $100, and 350% of cost price is $300, $350, and when I subtract that, I'm left with $250. That's my difference. And so these amounts then are a reflection of my percentages based on cost price. And similarly, my markup percentage based on sales or based on selling price is the ratio between markup to selling price, and that would give me a ratio of 250 to 350. And 250 to 350 amounts to 25 out of 35, or 5 out of 7, or in decimal form, it works out to be a percentage of 71.43%. So a markup of 71.43% on the selling price is equal to, it's equal to a markup of um, uh, 250% of cost price. So these two markups are identical. They'll always give you the same uh, percentages and dollar values when we plug them into the relationship. Now, uh, so, so we know that we can have a markup that is more than 100% if the markup is based on cost. Okay, So the markup can be greater than 100% if the markup is based on cost. Now, what happens, or is it possible, for markup to be more than 100% if it's based on selling price? That's my next question. So how are we going to answer that question? Well, again, let's start off with our relationship. Selling price minus cost price is equal to our markup. And now let's put in a number 
for the markup. Let's assume that the markup is is 250% of selling price. So in my markup row, I'm going to identify that the markup is 250% but it's based on selling price. Now I'm going to go to where the 100% of selling price is. So 100% of selling price is going to go up here at the top. 100% of selling price is going to be right up there. And now I ask you the question once again, just like I did before, what do I subtract from 100% of selling price such that I end up with 250% of selling price? And remember that it has to be based on the same base. It all has to be based on selling price because I am subtracting and I can only subtract like terms. So if I start off with 100%, what number do I subtract? What percentage do I subtract from 100% of selling price so that I end up with 200% of selling price? Well, frankly, that's not possible. This isn't, this isn't a, a feasible uh, solution. You know, I, from my point of view, does not compute. That would be my response to you. How can I start off, start off with a small amount, meaning 100% of something, and end up with more than what I started with? That's not feasible, not realistic. So therefore, it's not possible for the markup to be more than 100% of selling price. In fact, uh, if I start off with selling price, I'm going to draw a double line, a curvy line here to separate this. If I start off with 100% of selling price and I subtract my cost price from this and I end up with my markup and assuming that my markup rate is based on selling price, uh, I know that I will start off with 100% of selling price and my markup therefore um, has to be based on selling price as well. If I, if I identify the base as being my selling price and my retail, um, the most or the largest number that I can subtract from my selling price is going to be, if it's based on selling price, the biggest amount that I can subtract from that is 100%. I can't subtract any more than 100% because with that I will end up with 0% of selling price. If I do subtract, let's just say, pose the question, and, and it's a very legitimate question, what if my cost is greater than my selling price. What happens if my cost is greater than my selling price, right? Um, legitimate question. So let's go to the next page and see what happens then. Selling price minus cost price is equal to markup. Okay, And if I've got 100% of my selling price up here, okay, and I subtract something that is more than 100% of selling price, so if my cost price is greater than my selling price, okay, what do you have? Do you have a markup at all? No, you don't. Okay, There's no markup in this case. In fact, what happens if your cost price is greater than your selling price? You have a loss. Okay, You don't have a markup, you have a loss, and that's an entirely different situation.